All right, it's, it's uh, the day before Sunday, so it's time to do the preview video for the Vikings game this week for week six. And on tap, we have the Atlanta Falcons. So let's dive right into it and see what we have. So on the board here, you're going to see on the left-hand side the tail of the tape, if you will. Um, hopefully this is legible. I screen tested it. It should be fine. But if this format doesn't work, I'll change it so it's more easily readable in the future. So taking a look at the head-to-head -head for the offense and defense, starting with the offense, Falcons are 11th in total offense so far this season, 8th in passing, 17th in rushing, although Todd Gurley did have a pretty good game last week. And in pass protection, they rank 17th. On the Vikings side of things, they're 17th in total offense this year, 25th in passing, 4th in rushing, which is what they want. They want this to be high volume running, low volume passing. So I think the stats, while it looks bad as to be 25th in passing, that's a reflection of what they're trying to do. Pass protection is the worst part of it, and that is uh, 27th overall in the league in pass protection efficiency. So um, more on that in a minute. So just keep that in mind. On the defensive side of the ball, the Falcons are terrible. 31st in total defense, 31st in pass defense, 14th in rush defense, and 29th in pass rush efficiency. So what do these numbers tell us? Well, they give up a lot of yards. They give up a lot of points. And I think that is, um, you know, sort of... Uh, not really like um, a catalyst, but more so um, correlation to the fact of the uh, the defensive backs that they have to play on this team. Uh, those two being Isaiah Oliver and Kendall Sheffield, um, former uh, draft picks from Ohio State. And uh, I, Isaiah Oliver, I believe, was um, Washington, if I remember correctly. That could be wrong, though. And on the flip side of that, you're 29th in pass rush, which means you're not getting to the quarterback. You're not putting pressure uh, that makes things way more difficult on your defensive backs, and i.e. this leads to a pretty porous pass defense. On the Vikings' defensive side of the ball, they're 26th in total defense, 27th in passing defense, 24th in rushing defense, 13th in pass rush efficiency, which is surprising given that they haven't had Daniel Hunter this entire season. But they were able to open things up against Seattle uh, in the first half with uh, four sacks. Uh, Jan Ngakwe is averaging one sack per game. Uh, James Lynch, the fourth-round rookie from Baylor, he came off uh, the inactive list uh, on Sunday against the Seahawks and got his first sack of the season. So um, we're generating a pass rush, which is pretty exciting given that the interior is a bunch of crap and uh, we don't have Daniel Hunter. So uh, kudos to Mike Zimmer and the coaching staff for getting that out of uh, this front seven. Um, as far as everything else goes on the Vikings side, um, it's bad. You know, we started off pretty deep in the hole in terms of uh, defensive stats because of the two games that we played against Aaron Rodgers and the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, then there was also the game where uh, we sort of let Tennessee just run all over us. So, um, you know, the, the, if we're to take a look at like what matches up on the two columns on the two sides, 17th and rushing for the Falcons is probably a good indicator of what they're going to want to do. Um, because our interior run defense is pretty bad, 24th in the league. I mean, everything on the defense is pretty bad, so I think the Falcons might have their way with us uh, coming up on Sunday. And the fact that Holton Hill is, again, questionable, I, I think he's either questionable or doubtful for this Sunday. So his status is up in the air. So we might be seeing, um, you know, a repeat of Mike Hughes, Cam Dantzler, and Jeff Gladney being the, the cover guys. And those two, those three going up against Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst, and everybody else that they're going to throw at us, is pretty worrisome. So I think the, the thing that we can glean from all of these stats is that we're going to see um, a pretty high scoring game, at least in my opinion. And that leads me to believe that um, the Vikings are going to need to be aggressive like they were in the first half against Seattle. Now, once they got up 10 points, they sort of took their foot off the gas and got comfortable and they started handing the ball off to Dalvin Cook. Now, remember, Dalvin Cook's not going to be available for this game. He is out. The starter is going to be Alexander Madison. And uh, the backup is going to be Mike Boone. So for this game, I think they're going to have to stay aggressive. And the fact that the the, the pass defense for the Falcons is pretty atrocious, um, they should do that out of the gate and be confident that it's going to be achievable. Uh, one thing that I am looking at uh, this Sunday is Irv Smith Jr. Now, he was involved um, probably the most he's been involved since I've seen him in Minnesota uh, last week. And uh, it was kind of funny because leading up to the game, the press was asking them, yeah, you have this, uh, this second-round tight end that you don't really utilize 
this ever since you drafted him. What's up with that? And then they were like, oh, okay, we'll get him the ball, I guess. So he runs a lot of routes on the offensive snaps that he's there. Um, and he's been getting more looks. So I think that that is something that could open up underneath because these two corners, as we look here in the wide receiver versus DB matchup for the Falcons and the Vikings, Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen are pretty good talents. Going up solo against Kendall Sheffield and Isaiah Oliver in man coverage is probably going to result in the Falcons' defensive secondary getting burned more often than not. So I think we're going to probably see a lot of zone, um, cover two zone out of the Falcons' defense to try to mitigate the passing attack and make Alexander Madison beat them. Um, that would be my guess. And then coming back to Irv Smith Jr., if they do decide to play man, they're going to need help. Um, so probably you're looking at one of the linebackers, maybe Deion Jones, focusing on Kyle Rudolph. That leaves uh, less than stellar pass uh, coverage for um, somebody to play against Irv Smith. So I think Irv Smith could have a pretty big game this upcoming Sunday. Um, the other matchup that is interesting is going to be the trenches, more specifically at the top of the board here on the back behind me. We have the Vikings, uh, we have the Vikings offensive line. And the Falcons defensive line. Now, Grady Jarrett is one of the best interior defensive linemen in this league. And it's kind of terrifying because the interior uh, the interior of the Vikings offensive line is one of the worst in the league. And um, the report is that Drew Samia is going to miss this game. He is out. Yeah, he had two uh, DNPs for practices this week, uh, both occurring on Thursday and Friday uh, with the wrist injury. So we're going to see for the first time this season rookie Ezra Cleveland out of Boise State. Now, it's likely that he plays the right guard position. I don't know if Pat Elfline has been activated from IR. I didn't see that report happen, so I don't think Pat Elfline is going to be available. And even if he is off IR, he'll probably be inactive this Sunday just because he hasn't got to practice. So we're probably looking at uh, the offensive line grouping of Riley Reef at left tackle, Dakota Go Dozier at left guard, Garrett Bradbury at center, um, Ezra Cleveland at right guard, and then Brian O'Neill at right tackle. Other little note is that Brett Jones has been getting practice time at both center and guard, so he's probably just going to be there as the emergency uh, backup in case somebody goes down with an injury, God forbid. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see Ezra Cleveland for the first time this season against an interior defensive line that is anchored by Grady Jarrett, who is a pretty good player. So it wouldn't surprise me if they put him on Ezra Cleveland more often than not, so we'll have to see how they handle that. Um, the all-time history between these two teams, Vikings lead 20-11. to 11. The Vikings have won the last four, and the last time the Falcons defeated Minnesota was in 2011. So, as opposed to last week when the history was definitely not on our side against Seattle, it's more on our side this week. So, despite me, <laughs> in the picks video, if you watch that, I picked uh, the Falcons to win this game just to embrace chaos, if you will. Uh, it seems like we have, you know, the matchups in our favor that will help us exploit the Falcons' weaknesses and better hide our own. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a home game. It's against a team that's struggling. They're 0-5. Um, they just changed their head coach. Their new head coach is now Raheem Morris, who's, um, he hasn't coached for a while, but he's he has head coaching experience when he was with Tampa Bay. So I, I don't know. I don't want to rule the Falcons out because they could always get that little spark from having a head coaching change that we saw in Houston last week. But uh, I think the Vikings have a favorable matchup here and uh, they should win this game. Having said that, if they lose, they're going to go into the bye week with a lot of unhappy people. And uh, I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm going to go into this game thinking that a loss is going to occur because it will sort of, you know, solidify what I did in the pick video. Um, but I don't know. I just have a bad feeling about this. It's just, it's just a bad feeling, you know, seeing the Falcons go 0 and 6 to start the season, it just feels unlikely, you know, and seeing the Vikings go 1 and 5 after the start that we've had, that feels realistic. So, uh, yeah, that is my take on the, uh, Falcons versus Vikings for Sunday for week six. Uh, hope you enjoyed this game preview. I'll see you in the next one.